My name is Alex. Welcome back to another Stormworks building rescue mission. Wait, no, not mission. Welcome back to Stormworks build and rescue, or more commonly known as Stormworks. Now, many of you may or may not know that nuclear reactors have recently came out in this game. And Steam. That's pretty exciting. Because... I don't know about you, but for me, I've always wanted some source of, like, infinite energy. Not infinite energy, but something that you don't really need to have air to combust. Like, if you're in a submarine, for example. But today we're going to be looking on how to create a nuclear reactor from scratch. Hopefully the FBI doesn't get on me for that. So, this is going to be a very straightforward, simple video. It's going to cover, like, how to um, just create something, how to control it, and how to manage it. We're not going to go into the extreme um, uh, logic into it. We're just going to go into how to basically control it. Um, partly because I'm also learning a bit myself. However, I learned enough to understand. So, right now, we're just going to create a base grid. Uh, let's actually... Let's get that back, and let's actually make that multiply. Sweet. So we're just going to create a grid, not too big, not too small, I haven't really done much testing. Okay, let's just spawn that in real quick to make sure that's all gooch. Yep, that should be more than perfect. Okay, well, we're going to take that now, we're going to make the nuclear reactor. So if you scroll down a bit, use your mouse, uh, we're going to go down to, where is it, steam, it's going to be in steam. Uh, steam power granted because how nuclear reactors work is very simple uh, You have your nuclear reacting. It's fizz it's fizzing. It's uh, Reacting to uranium. I believe I can't remember off the top of my head that creates heat There's water surrounding it that gets boiled that boiler that boiling water gets sent to a boiler the Boiler combines that water and heat and makes it into steam that steam gets sent into a turbine which turns whatever you want to turn, either generator, propeller, a wheel, whatever. And then that goes back to a condensator, or condenser, my bad. And that gets turned back into water, but more on that a little later in the video. So here we have our main things, the control rod, the fuel assembly, and the fuel rod. So we're going to do a four, uh, we're going to do an eight uh, reactor, eight assembly kind of thing. There's going to be eight of them. So we're just going to quickly put eight of these things. We're going to put them in probably like a, a th uh, I don't know, just the <laughs> We're going to do it like, actually, no, it'll be a six assembly. How about that? Actually, it'll be eight. It'll just be six for now, for now, for now. But we're going to do a three by two system. Actually, no, let's do nine. Let's get a three by, uh, three by three reacting system. There you go. You can put it any way you want. Okay. So now we're going to have to have the fuel rods, which are the actual things that, well, react. These are the actual uranium. Don't mind if they're glowing white at the moment. They don't glow white unless they're hot. Well, we'll show you in progress. Okay, but very first thing we have to do is... Okay, so let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. So we're going to need a way to put these fuel rods into the actual uh, assemblies because uh, the fuel rods are basically everything. They're basically the fuel tanks. And you know, you can't just put that in. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to probably, there's some ways to do it, but the most efficient way I found out is to take a block, put it, um, I believe it was like this. Up, 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 up. Up a little bit. And that's a little too much. Up, 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 up. 
Okay, this is me in the edit feature me. Um, I'm just gonna skip to the part where I actually figure it out because for like the next 15 minutes, I've been desperately trying to figure it out. But essentially what I did was I moved this linear track, which is gonna be having to drop the fuel rods in by gravity. So I put that up, but I also forgot to move the entire project down since I didn't know there was a skybox limit. Another thing to keep in mind is that thing that I'm currently highlighting now, you have to keep that at least two blocks away. You see right now I'm making it one block away, you have to do a one more block away. Because to keep in mind, there's the linear track. That linear track, what that does is it has a block on it, and that block I'm gonna, we're gonna build a podium on it, as you're gonna see in a couple seconds. Huh. Okay, so what we're gonna actually do now that I think about it, we're going to put that up here, but we're gonna actually move this base. Uh, where's the move, 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 move. We're actually gonna move this base a little bit all the way down so we have as much room to move as possible. There we go. And then from that, we're gonna make it a little up because the whole point we, need, we want these uh, fuel rods to just drop in by gravity, preferably. So it's gonna come that up, 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 up. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough. Yeah, I think that'd be more than enough. We're gonna take a linear track base. That's just a linear track. We're gonna put that, I think, around here is good. We're gonna put these extensions. Sweet. Actually, we don't need that all the way. We're probably just gonna put these extensions till I think this is like good. Okay, we're gonna extend this. Actually, ugh. actually, you know what we're gonna do? Sorry guys, this is also, I'm learning this as we go, but this is gonna be functional. Uh, we're gonna put this two blocks away. Keep it kind of keep it. I know there's a much faster way to doing this like that, but it's a little trickier for me. Okay, we're gonna take the track base, put this up, good. We're gonna take the extension, put it to like, I don't know, I think this, this is enough? Yeah, it'd be more than enough. We're gonna take the actual, we're gonna make a little base that's just gonna basically just, there we go. There we go, and there we go. So that in theory, should be perfectly aligned. Seems pretty aligned to me. Yep, that's a pretty much aligned. Now, we're gonna have to put these fuel rods in. Now, as we spawn it in, it's gonna naturally drop by gravity. So we don't worry about that. We take these fuel rods. Now, if you might have noticed, the more keen viewers, you're gonna see it has two ends. It has the circle end, and it has this kind of rectangle kind of looking thing. And if we look through here, you see they have these circle things, so we have to insert them into a circle end. So that's just going to put the circle side down. Oh, frick. I'm going to put that circle side down. Very good. Just put them in like that. They'll naturally drop by gravity, I hope. Good. Now let's just make sure that this is going to drop by gravity. Oh. Don't forget these two pieces at spawn and let's just really quickly see if it'll drop by gravity. Yep, it's in already. So now it's radiating. Okay, good. But that's not done yet. So this is how that's going to work. Now we're going to need to put in control rods. Control rods are essentially uh, basically like the throttle on a car. It just shows how much um, radiating radiation radiation thingy radiating thingy it just shows how much uh, power it's gonna make essentially it closes it, it slows down the fusion slowing down the fusion essentially makes it um, uh, much much slower wait what Did I just 
slowing down the fusion makes it slower. <laughs> yes. Let me actually figure out how I do this real quick and I'll get back to you guys. And we're back, everyone. Sorry about that. Ooh, the game's gonna get poor. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is... Oh, no. Just leave. You're disgusting. No, control rods are not disgusting. <laughs> so we're gonna take this control rod and we're gonna build a base. So it should be about three high. So until you don't see this gray part anymore. So just do it like that. And do it like uh, that. Good. Now, it's up to you how many control rods you want to place. However, at the gen, I don't know, some people like to just place half of it, many is right. I'm just going to place three for each side. I'm just going to do it like that. I know this is maybe overkill, but I'm telling you, Chernobyl was very serious. <laughs> there we go. We're just going to place it like that. You know, we may not need that many. We may just, we can, yeah, we can probably just get rid of one side yeah there you go yeah so you can get so you guys can see the reactor reacting okay good now that's pretty much it so they're gonna drop into there it's gonna fall we can control how much control we get yes 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 Okay, so now we're just gonna make a base because the whole point of reacting reaction nuclear reactors is to um, essentially see, I mean, to boil water and we need to have some sort of fluid and it has to be fresh water, I believe. We're gonna not put windows actually because I do want to see what's going on in, in there. Is there like a window I could use? A good window. The worst comes to worst, I'll just take a camera, but. You know, I'll just take a camera into there. Just stick a camera in there. There you go. Because I can't be bothered to put a. Okay, let's build that up a little bit. Let's build it all the way up. To maybe a little higher, yeah, a little bit. Up there, I think. Yeah, I think that should be good. Okay, that shall be good. Place that into there. We're gonna take this and just build that up. Good, you can see reactors are not really small really quite big granted I kind of made mine a little big I probably should have put that linear track a little lower but nonetheless man, I want to really put windows in I mean I guess I could just put some one by ones but I want to look good I'll cut to the point where we stop placing windows Okay, and we're just about done We're placing these last few, and we're done. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, what we're gonna pro- I probably should place them last, those windows. So now, what we're gonna do is get a battery. I just get one large battery. We're just gonna put that in the corner somewhere. Perfect. We're gonna put take a battery, and what we're, we're gonna do is, I believe... These control rods- Okay, you know what? Okay, let's stop duplicating. Okay, that's actually pretty simple. Okay. That's pretty much actually it for the actual reactor. Now, we're gonna actually need a fluid, as I was saying. Fluid, uh, da 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 da, -da. fluid spawner, preferably. Just gonna put this about, like, doesn't really matter where you put it, and that's an issue because you know, like, if I, that's actually quite a bad issue if it's like a hole at the bottom. Okay, good. So, we're just gonna take a fluid spawner, we're gonna put fresh water. That's pretty, that's it, pretty much. Take the fluid spawner, put some fresh water. Good. Now, what we're gonna need to do is spawn a boiler. 
That's one of the new things. We're gonna take a boiler. Doesn't really matter how you put it, we're just gonna put it like that. So this side has steam out, that's gonna be putting into a turbine. And this side has steam in, that's gonna, or yeah, water in. And steam coolant A and coolant B, this is just to cool down the boiler so it doesn't go kabooey. We actually don't need to worry about coolant. Oh, actually, no, we do. I'm so sorry. We do. That's actually the whole point of the coolant is the, um, how you're going to put the transfer water. So we're just going to put a little hole into the, sounds so bad. We're going to put a little hole in the reactor real quick. We're going to take a fluid port. We're going to actually just take a fluid. Let's rotate that. Good. And same here. Good. Okay. We actually going to need a fluid pump. Fluid pump. We're just going to need a fluid pumpy, pumpy, pump, 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 pump. I don't really know. Is there a difference in which way it pumps in? Is there actually a difference in which way this thing pumps? Okay, fluid in. So the fluid A, I'm going to just put that as fluid coming into the boiler. So we're going to actually just bond the fluid pump in real quick. So this way, I'm just making sure we're putting it to the right side. So fluid in is the is the kind of skinnier side and fluid out is the big side. So we're going to take that. Like that. And this one's going to be vice versa because we're trying to pump water out. There we go. So we're just going to take um, a pipe now, put fluid up. I don't really believe it matters which way you put it in. You can have like one way just coming out. I don't really think you need to worry about fluid coolant B being, um, I don't really think that matters which way you put it in. There we go, we're just gonna put that in. Okay, there we go. And we're just gonna put that in. Hey, there we go. So that's that's gonna be fluid coming in. And this is gonna be fluid essentially coming out. It's not really rocket science. It's nuclear science. There we go. That's going to be coming up. We're going to rotate that there. We're going to put that there. We're going to rotate that there. There. Take a little piece and connect them up. Good. That's pretty much done now for these pumpy mabobbies. We're gonna have to hook these babies up to electricity. No idea why this fire extinguisher needs electricity. Got it tucked up. Now we're just going to need on off button. We're just going to place a simple toggle button. Just going to put a simple. Actually, you know what? Let's, let me build a quick like base real quick so we can see what's going on. So we're going to take. We're going to need toggle button. Actually, it's already in my inventory. We're going to need a toggle button. We're going to name that really quickly. Actually, I only need one, but I'm just gonna need that pumps. We're gonna hook that up to here. We're gonna hook that up to electricity. I'm just gonna interconnect these things. Connect! 
Good. Now this one, I don't know. I think we're going to need that soon. Okay, so that's pretty much the boiler done. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not done. That's the boiler getting its thing done. Now we're going to need a fluid tank. Now we're going to need a fluid tank. We're going to just take a medium tank. Just going to hook that up into... Take that there. And take that there. There you go. That's our water. Let's make sure that's in that size fresh water. You know, because we don't want to be burning diesel. Good. And then there's basically our output steam out. Now we're gonna put a turbine or turbine. Steam turbine. And we're just gonna put prop put a pro prop at the pip 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 that prop at the end of it. There we go, we're just gonna put a nice prop at the end of it. A nice, just large prop. And we make sure to paint our props yellow because it's kind of like, it's a rule nowadays. It's not a rule, but it's fun. <laughs> so prop is painted yellow. Now we're gonna take the steam. This is gonna be basically what we get from it. Uh, and you notice there's a torque side, you could put something else on it. In this case, we're not, but you could put in maybe a gen if you want it, a generator. So now we're going to take this. And now actually from all the testing I've did, you, I don't, it's kind of gearboxes are kind of iffy with this. Sometimes the water and the reactor doesn't spawn. It's gonna probably, um, it, they're probably gonna fix it soon, but I don't know how gearboxes work in this. So now we're just gonna take that. Which one is steam in? Okay, steam in's in this one, which is actually very good for me because it's easy. And now we're gonna actually put a valve. Just a fluid um, variable valve because I actually kind of find it easier because you can control how much steam is entering the turbine. And that's gonna essentially just control a cent how much like throttle you're gonna be doing. And I find that actually it's gonna be easier instead of having to like manually, like the, re re the reactor is gonna be reacting, of course. But if you don't want to like go out and like full throttle always, you can control how much steam gets through. So what we're going to do is connect this to a battery. Then we're going to put a throttle lever. So instead of this being here, we're going to put a throttle lever. We're actually going to put at least, um, we're going to at least put two because then we need at least two levers. One for the actual control rods going in and out and one for the, the valve. So we're gonna set those two levers. And there's an easier way to do this, I know. And then we're just gonna hit the, um, so this one's gonna be to the steam valve. It's gonna be valve. We're gonna actually turn down the sensitivity a bit. Okay, that's the valve done. And now we're just gonna have to put the excess steam. Now, here's the thing. You can put it as simply as just put a port out so it just steams. And But the issue is it's not gonna be a closed loop. It's just gonna be steam's gonna be done. And the issue with that is it's going to waste a lot of water. And that means it's going to dun dun dun. It's gonna be, uh, you're gonna run out of water. You're gonna run out of fluid in the boiler so what we're gonna do is add in condenser and let me go figure out how to do that I'm back okay so I have completely figured out how to make this condenser work but it so happened to be that I have placed everything in the wrong way in terms of actually like so I mean, I haven't placed anything wrong we can make this work for sure but it's a lot easier to do it a different way but we're just gonna do it like this so here's a steam out. So that's going to be from the boiler. That's going to turn the prop or whatever in the case it's going to be. Maybe a generator. Of course, you can have a generator connected on this side too. 
Um, because it's two outputs. And we're going to take this, because we want to put a condenser in it to turn the steam back into water so we don't kind of don't run out of water. And we're going to actually do this. It's going to be a little bit complex because I have was not smart enough to think ahead and realize uh, to put everything close together. So now we're going to have to put this condenser and the water that I created from the steam is going to have to run all the way back to this fluid tank. Which so happens to be also in the wrong way. Yes, so we're gonna actually have to do a little bit of editing. Take this fluid tank. Gonna take a medium tank. We're gonna place this vertically. Not that kind of, a little closer. Because we're gonna need those two holes, this one and that one. Wait. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. They're going to need to be. This is going to come back from the condenser, condenser, and this is going to be taken out of the uh, tank. It doesn't actually matter which side. I just realized. So we're going to tank, tank, tank. Yes, we're going to tank this. We're going to tank. Hey guys, it's me from the edit again. Realize that I placed this tank, however, I forgot to switch it to fresh water. That's very, very important. You're going to see in a couple of minutes what's going to happen. Sweet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to need a... So this side is the... Oh, crap. Just flip something. Everything's going wrong. So we're going to make sure... Is this the water out? This better... Ugh. Okay, so we're gonna flip it. Is this the water out? No, okay, good, that's the steam in, that's good. We want the steam side. So we're gonna quickly go up so we don't cut our own pipe off with our drop. Up, 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 up. Now about the steam valve, I don't know if that's gonna work because I've just started testing this literally just today. So I haven't really got this. It just came to my head. I mean, like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea, you know? So maybe it won't work. So we're going to take that. Good. So that is going to be the excess steam going into condenser. The condenser is now going to condense that steam into water. And that water is going to be... Let's actually can do that right now. And that water that it made, it's going to be put back in this tank. So it's kind of like a closed loop system. It's a little complicated, but once you actually run it, it's really actually quite simple. Now, it could have been, maybe I should have been a better person and maybe put the, uh, I don't know, the uh, condenser closer to the tank, but oh well. Serious, bruh. Okay, good. That's done. Now you're wondering what these two holes up here is. That's actually just for a rad or a radiator. So you're gonna put a radiator in. Just actually can just put a. Is there like is there such a thing as it? Where's the radiator? I can search it up. I don't want the ones that are like the old ones. I want the ones with the fans at the top. Decorative fluid. Okay, what do we got here? We don't want like a heat radiator. I want a cooling radiator. Just say, where are the radiators? I want the ones that are like spin around with those little fans. It's not these, is it? Oh, it is these, okay. No, that's not what I want. So we just want a fluid heat radiator. So we're just gonna have a big radiator, a big raid. Oh, wrong way, stupid. gonna have a big radiator 
And essentially, we just hook them up to these holes. Actually, you know, I'll make that a little bit more centered. Huh? Okay, we're just gonna take this. Put that back. I'm just gonna run it down to here. Take that off. There, good. And we're just gonna do the same thing for this. E control rods, fun. So we're just gonna uh, take these, this thing, and just hook up all these things. Now these need electricity. No control rods apparently don't need electricity. Now I don't know what this is, but I just know what this is insertion target so just to select it to insertion target I'm guessing this is if you have a fixed signal but we have levers now okay good it's all connected electricity now we're gonna need actually another toggle button and that's gonna be for the radiator to turn on yeah you could have a constant on signal but I just find it maybe it's just fun I guess or easier just gonna turn on the radiator. Again, everything is good there. That's just, that's connected. Let's connect this to electricity. Good, that's connected as well. Sweet, that's all done. That's all the buttons. So this is going to be running the uh, pumps and this is going to be running the rad. Sweet. Now we're going to need is some dials. Mostly just one dial. And that main dial is a very important dial. Okay, my game. Just let's spawn this in real quick. That's returning back to workbench. Okay, good. I can play stuff now. Okay, I know like it's so much just had a little freak out. So we're gonna take this dial, which is extremely important. I take electricity. Connect that there. Take the data. And that's going to be on the temp. Should there be something? The fuel rod temp. We only need one. So there you go. We're just going to have a little backlight because why not? We're going to have a little button for backlight. There you go. And just set that to backlight. And Good. Uh, so that's backlight. Okay, good. That's actually pretty much it. That's all there is to a reactor. Now let me quickly save it. Good, she saved. And let's spawn it in. So first thing we're gonna need to do is turn on the backlight, stupid. Oh, actually, hold on. So, the reactor gets hot. 
So uh, from my experience testing, it seems to go kabooey, meltdown at 1480 degrees, roughly, maybe a little higher, but somewhere like that. So you want to pretty much keep it, let's just the general rule, keep the reactor temperature below 1500 at all costs. Good. So we're actually just going to name this react, <coughs> excuse me, reactor temp. We're going to put this at zero. And we're going to put this at, let's say, 1495. Good. Because at this rate, if that gauge goes over, if that gauge is pretty much, that dial is limited to down there. So as you see, it's already starting to do its fission. So we're going to turn on the pumps, and we're going to turn on the radiator. This is me in the edit again. Also, pay attention. The radiator fans are not spinning. That's a really big issue that's going to come up soon. to start letting air through, I mean steam through. Now that valve should be valving. Let us just check. Yeah, valve is open. As you see, the temp is starting to come up. Now we're gonna add a, a little control rods in there. Those control rods essentially slow down the fission. So see, the more we add, the slower it's gonna heat up. So there you go, they're starting to glow a little bit. That glowing is normal, it should be kind of glowing white. Maybe a little, like, it should be like amber. Okay, there you go, 250, okay, that's pretty much good. We can, for what we're using it today, that's good. There you go, that's pretty much it. Now the boiler should start to heat up now. Which it is. It's pushing 60 degrees, 61, 62. Good. And now 100 is going to start making steam. Good. Now, I don't know about this radiator, why it's not. Or, uh, flexing your hand. Why it's not on. Or maybe it's just I don't see it working. Is my rat even working? That's my question. No, it's not. Ha <laughs> ha. That's me being stupid. My rat isn't working. <laughs> okay, guys. I just figured out something very cool. My radiator wasn't working. That's why. Also, I've added a pressure gauge on the boiler. So my radiator, in turn, wasn't working. So you see, now if I turn that on, that should be spinning. So that was the issue. Make sure you connect your radiators, kids. Good, sorry about that. That was the issue. Now we're gonna let this build. We don't even need to let it build much. We'll let it just build up to like, I don't know, 200 or so. We don't really need to get too hot. There you go, you see now I have the temperature. We have a pressure gauge now. Remember, at 10 units of pressure, it blows up. So we can have to make sure this dial, I forgot to name it, it doesn't get above 10. Okay, good. Radi um, re reactor is coming up nice and smoothly. No issues there. Pressure is coming up nice and smoothly. It's 40 degrees, 41, 42. I mean, the pumps are pumping. The batteries are battering. Why aren't they just charging? Okay, I'm not charging. Reactor is nicely coming nice and up. The only reason why you can't see any other reactor is just because it's uh, uh, all covered by these control rods. But trust me, they're working. Okay, let's engage those control rods now. Pressure should be building any second. Water! It is a diesel! That is not water, that is diesel. So we were burning diesel. I'm not even burning diesel, but we're using diesel. Because I'm stupid. So that's the issue, guys. That was the issue. We're back now, and that's the issue. That was set to diesel, not water.
And these fluid pumps, don't you don't have to do anything about them. Don't worry about them. I just did that for, to you know, because I was kind of getting confused why it wasn't working. So now it should work flawlessly. Because for some odd reason, that was sent. Se okay, let's actually no, let's engage that because I'm like here pumping and that, but like my boiler's not heating up and I need my boiler to heat up. So that was kind of weird. Okay, let's make sure these that the re reactor doesn't go too much. I can just core out. Okay, that's fine. Let's increase that. Okay, let's increase that quite a bit. Okay, let's put that to about 35 is the pressure. There we go, it's now starting to come this slowly, so then we're gonna now release a little bit. Perfect. Uh, pressure should start building any second. There it is. We're gonna engage the turbine. There you go. And if we close it, it builds back up. And if we open it, there's our system. Reactor's chilling. There it is, it's done. That's how it works. So now we can easily close the valve to stop the propeller from spinning. We can turn off the pumps, keep the radiator always on. Actually, keep the pumps always on. There you go. The trailer stops being engaged again. Reactor's chilling at 630, which is still a little hot, but nonetheless. There you go. That, this is propulsion. And keep in mind, the generator at the back is also spinning. See? And let's see how the how fast the prop is spinning. 15 RPFs, that's pretty fast. There you go. The water is being used, everything's being used, it's perfect. That's how it works. Now if you want to shut her down, there you go. And we haven't had to use the fire extinguisher. Now, if you want to shut it down, you close this prop. You max out the control rods to cool it down. You keep the radiator on because you don't want to lose any water or steam. You, in theory, turn off the pumps. Keep on the pumps, actually. So as the, uh, as the thing starts to cool down, the pressure is going to slightly get dropped now. There you go. It's fading away. See, it's cooling down. Now once the thing reaches 100, if you want to let go of all the pressure, You can just open the tabs back up. And then you see, now we still have pressure. But now since the reactor's cooling down, the water around is not hot. And so, it's gonna start losing its pressure now. There you go. That's all there is to it. So, without that further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry this was a kind of a long one. We had some troubleshooting issues. And I hope to guys see you in a future video. Goodbye!